All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. So just to make sure you guys can all hear me now still. Someone type in the chat that you hear my voice. Or am I back to being muted? All right. Thank you. Okay. So uh, this is an important meeting. It's our last meeting. Uh, we're wrapping up this semester this week. You have two big assignments. You'll notice that you do not have a discussion board assignment. So I'm assuming most of you are okay with the fact that you don't have a discussion board. But what we're going to be talking about today is how we're going to wrap up uh, this last week. And I'm just gonna leave with a couple of parting thoughts because this will be our last time that we're together. Um, this is a, a book that I'm just gonna reference quickly. Um, it's called Mastery. The, the subtitle, The Keys to Success and Long-Term Fulfillment. Um, and this is by George Leonard. I picked this book up at the bookstore a few years ago. And uh, he talks about how we learn things. And I think it's just a good, kind of a good parting idea to share with you before we go. There are different kinds of learning styles that we all have. And we, when we learn, we have a tendency to, I'm going to spotlight this, see if this works. Um, we have a tendency to, oops, I don't know what that happened there. That's not what I want. Hang on. Let's do arrow, mouse, arrow, draw. Well, scrap that idea. So you'd have to follow along. Uh, the first learning style is what we call the dabbler. And the dabbler is very common. I'm a bit of a dabbler. But what George Leonard says, as we learn, sometimes we, let's, let's just use playing the piano as an example. If we are to learn the piano, we go along and we practice and we practice and we practice. And then this little bell curve, this little chart goes up and we improve. But sometimes after we improve some, we digress a little bit, even though the, the new line is a little higher. But we get frustrated or impatient, and we kind of quit. So we say, okay, I'm not going to be a dab. I'm not going to be a piano player. I'm going to be a guitar player. So we pick up the guitar player and the guitar, and we learn it, and we learn it, and then we kind of peter out. And then we say, okay, now I'm going to pick up art or something like that, okay? Um, and we just kind of start things and stop. The other kind of person is what we call an obsessive, and we stick with it longer, and we get really good, and we improve, and we fight hard, and we get better, but if we're obsessed about something, that usually doesn't last either. Uh, we can be the hacker. The hacker means we just progress, and we improve, and we progress, and we improve, and we kind of stay with it, but we don't ever practice enough to become expert at it. Um, and then we are, and I'm this often, the non-starter. We think maybe I'll pick up something or maybe I'll do the piano or maybe I'll do something along that line. Um, and the reason that we do this is we want to be on what we call the master's journey. And the master's journey is we practice I'm going to actually try this because this will make more sense. Uh, I brought the arrow. We practice and practice and practice, and then we improve, and then we practice some more, and then we improve. Oops, I didn't that very well. Um, and we practice and we improve, but we stick with it long enough that over time, we become genuinely good at something. We don't quit. But we have these spaces in between improvement where we I lost my mouse. Hang on, here we go, here we go. Okay. All right. This meeting is not going very well. This stuff's not working. Anyway, so as I've shared with you the master's journey, what are your thoughts? What is the key to sticking with something. You guys can type in the chat or you can, I'd love to hear from a couple of you or any of you. Any ideas, what, what's the key 
to sticking with something over time. Okay, Brianna says you need to have a passion for it. Okay, love that. Yes, I agree with that. Any other ideas? Spending the right amount of time. Thank you from that. Keep practicing no matter how hard it gets. Love that. Thank you. Pray about it. Thank you for that one. Constant practice. And Sadie says you probably have to really enjoy it and have a strong why. I think that's good. That's kind of what we've been talking about. And he says someone to encourage you. Well, the challenge we have in today's society is we are so prone to instant gratification. We have things that come and we, and we just, we can be entertained so quickly. We can buy something so quickly. We can do things so quickly. And that is our challenge and it's not sustainable. Well, this is the key to the master's journey. According to Leonard, my arrows are still there, so ignore those. Uh, and you guys have nailed a lot of these, but the key is to enjoy the plateaus. Love, even, love it even when you're not improving. Because a lot of the time, we aren't going to improve. We're going to just have these spaces, these plateaus. And there's some things that will help us through the plateaus. And they are find good teachers, practice, surrender to your teacher, visualize success, and seek the edges. So did I hear a comment? I'd love a comment. Anybody? Okay. So we always need to understand homeostasis, and that is we, this bench line, right? This old habits where we used to be, there's always this pull to go back to it. And the way to get beyond that is to just love the practice. George, um, Coach Wooden said, John Wooden said, I don't know why I want to call him George. He said, in my coaching, I informed every player who came under my supervision that the outcome of a game was simply the byproduct of the effort we made to prepare. They understood our destination was a successful journey, namely total, complete, and detailed preparation. Too often we neglect our journey and our eagerness, eagerness or anxiety about reaching the goal. So that's what we're doing today. Now, quickly, I'm just gonna do this because we're gonna talk about the, two, the last part of your mission statement. This week, you're building your mission statement. Brother Christensen calls it your song. Your mission statement is your values encapsulated into something smaller. Uh, this is my mission statement. As a disciple of Christ, I cheerfully help others find joy in him. I daily strive to know him, trust him, serve his children, become more like him, and thank him. And we've talked about other mission statements. This is the mission statement of Brother Christensen. We've done this earlier in the semester. A man who is dedicated to improve the lives of other people, a kind, honest, forgiving, and selfless husband, father, and friend, a man who just doesn't believe in God, but who believes God. So your mission statement shouldn't be a sentence. That's not enough. But I don't think it should be a page. The ideal mission statement in my mind is a statement that is quick enough that you can recite it from memory pretty easily. And one that inspires you to be motivated to do and follow and, and be better. So that's your mission statement, okay? So let's talk about the seven parts of your creed document. Your assignment due by Friday is to take all seven parts and package it into one document. And I'm going to blow up this thing. I think this is still part of the syllabus. This says there are 10 things that I'm going to look at, okay? So those of you on the live meeting and those of you who watch the recording, I want you to ignore almost all of this, okay? Because I'm not going to go in and grade your grammar. So number six, nope. Not going to do it. I got a, I got a hundred of you. I'm not going to do that. I'd rather read your personal creed document and get a sense of who you are. So all I'm looking for is two things, all seven parts and effort. I'm not going to judge you on, you know, it's not flowery enough or not, you know, graphic enough. But if that's you, you should do that. You should include those kinds of things, right? 
Uh, I'm looking for all seven parts and effort. If you're missing any of the seven parts or missing part of a part, then I'll have to go in and maybe correspond with you a little bit um, and send you a note, right? But I want to see all seven parts and effort. That's simple. Okay, that's really important. Any questions on that? Let me get back to my chat. I've lost it somewhere. Chat's gone. Here it is. Any questions? Seven parts effort packaged together. It can be in PowerPoint. It can be in so Word. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to find out. Um, so how would you know that the seven parts are connected? Do we have to put in, um, let's say, the... Uh, let's say part one, part two, part three, or we should put it, we should write an essay form whereby we'll make it connect with each other, like every paragraph. Yeah, no, just, you should have some kind of label on the seven parts, whether it's part one or your beliefs, part two, which is your mentors and board of advisors. Okay. Part three is you, what makes you unique. Part four is your values. Part five is your goals. Part six is your, uh, one we did last week, switch points, gratitude. And part seven is your mission statement. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank so you. It's easy for me to just be able to say, okay, there's part one. I'm going to read through it. There's part two. Good job. Here's part three. Love it. And man, see the seven parts. Okay. Thank you. And so Sadie says, can we use part of something that's already been created for a mission statement? So, uh, the, yes. But I don't want you to just take something and say, ah, oh, this is my mission statement. But if you look at my mission statement, I have a couple things in there on mine that I have borrowed, right? So I cheerfully help others find joy in him. Um, cheerfully comes from D and C. I'm going to conclude with this actually. Doctrine and Covenants 117 verse 23. And joy comes from Adam felt that men might be and men are, they might have joy. And I use joy. Uh, I think I shared that in the class already that the best way to get to joy is to put Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. For me, that in my mission statement is a reminder to put Jesus first, others second, yourself third. Okay? So, yeah, you can, you can borrow. Just make it yours. Don't just say, you know, my mission statement is to invite all to come unto Christ and be perfected in him. That's the church's mission statement. But you can certainly embed that into your mission statement. Okay? And again, it's not just a sentence. Uh, that's a model, right? Um, it needs to be a little bit more than that. But I, wouldn't, I, would, I would invite you, encourage you, the, the case study this week lends itself to like a big page-long mission statement. That's fine, but I'd recommend synthesizing it and scrunching it up and focusing it down to one smaller thing, right? The church's mission statement is actually pretty big, but the center of it is invite all to come unto Christ and be perfected in him. Back to why I didn't, I didn't use that one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to end today, and then we'll stay on for any questions. And Foster asks, can it be in Word? Absolutely. It can be in Word, and PowerPoint, a Prezi, PDF, however you want to build it. Now, on your personal creed document, um, I was talking to a, one of the other teachers who's teaching this class, and she actually took this class from me when I taught it in the classroom. And she's teaching it now, and I said, do you know where your first personal creed document is? And she says, yes, and she uses it. Well, that's how I know that this, this course is a success. This course is a success if, for me, you personally, if your personal creed document is something that you put your heart and soul into it enough that it is something you will want to keep and cherish and update, make a, a smaller copy and put it in the back of your scriptures, uh, something that you use and re refer to often. So favorite quote, favorite scripture. Favorite quote is this one from President Spencer W. Kimball. He said, only when you lift a burden, God will lift your burden. The divine paradox this, the man who staggers and falls because his burden is too great can lighten that burden by taking on the weight of another's burden. 
You get by giving, but your part of giving must be given first. So when we struggle, the tendency is to turn inward. The hope is that we'll turn outward and strive to bless and serve other people. And my favorite scripture, I'm just going to do the last one. Uh, this is what I call my safety net scripture, because sometimes as you guys go through life and we have life hit you in the face and you have trials and, and things that are going well or not well, and we sometimes wonder where does all this lead and how are we going to get to the end of a row or find a career or find a spouse or find a passion? Heavenly Father, the very last thing he told Joseph Smith in Liberty Jail was, therefore, dearly beloved brethren and sisters, cheerfully do all things that lie in your power. Sometimes you have to fake cheerful, but act, do things, live the gospel, serve other people, do the right things. And then take time to be still. For me, that time to be still is your 15 minutes a day when you're just quiet and you can let God talk to you with assurance, with faith, and you will see the salvation of God and his arm will be revealed. You'll see his plan. You'll see what he has in store for you. All you have to do is with a positive, optimistic attitude, celebrating what's right in the world, practicing all the things you've learned in this class, do all that you can to serve God and serve other people. Take time to be still, and God will direct every part of your life. And that is my concluding testimony for this class. And I leave that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is it. Okay. Questions. Anybody have any questions? It's super important. If you have any questions, about wrapping up this week. I'm happy to hear him. I'll stay on to answer any questions. Um, and so Sadie asked a really important question. We are not having a meeting next week, okay? It is on the syllabus. I'll go and give everybody credit, but there's nothing to meet on. And next week, you only have one assignment, and it'll literally take you five minutes, and that is to write a letter to a friend about this class. Just write a letter. This is what personal achievement did for me. And then Viviana asks, is there any re way we shouldn't describe people, for example, a website would be perfect. Yeah, it'd be fine. Just, just, I just need a link so I can go see it. You're welcome, Elijah. Yeah. So yeah, as long as I can see it, if it's a link to a website, that's perfectly fine too. As long as I can get to it and see the seven parts. Okay, any other questions? Now, for those of you watching the recording, please let me know if you have any questions by email or by phone, or you can come see me. My office is in the Mannering Center, MC129. So happy to help. You guys are all welcome. This is, in my opinion, a class everyone should take. So, all right. Thank you all. And we'll see you sometime. Hey, I did have a quick question, if that's all right. Yeah. So did you say we had to involve, or that we had to include a quote in our personal statement? No. But no? Okay. Just don't make a quote your mission statement. Gotcha. That's probably what I heard. You can include one in it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. All right. Okay, I'll stay on. Stop the recording, but I'll stay on for any questions, and we'll uh, be in touch. Thanks.